So if you're thinking about moving to Pennsylvania or maybe New Jersey or maybe just overall somewhere on the East Coast and you're just not sure exactly where yet. Since New Jersey and Pennsylvania border each other, a lot of people that are being relocated to this area typically have the flexibility on where to live depending on their commute time. I constantly have people reach out from other areas and other states to ask my opinion on if PA or New Jersey is better. And although I live and grew up in Pennsylvania, I promise this video will be a complete unbiased review of Pennsylvania versus New Jersey. Stick around to the end for one of the most important reasons why I see people leaving one of these two states. So let's start with the average price of a home in Pennsylvania versus New Jersey. So starting out with New Jersey, the average sales price of a home in New Jersey is $418,500. So let's take a look here and see what type of home you can get throughout New Jersey for right around that price point. All right, so taking a look here, we can see that the homes around this price point in New Jersey are around three to five bedrooms typically, anywhere from 400 to 425,000. There's a good mix of single family homes along with some townhomes, and that's pretty much covering everywhere from North Jersey, which is closer to New York, all the way down to Southern Jersey, which is right along the beach. Obviously down when you start to get closer to the beach, it becomes more and more expensive. But let's jump over and take a look at the average sales price in Pennsylvania and some examples. So the average sales price of a home in Pennsylvania is $221,985. Let's take a look here and see what we can get for that same price range. So again, we can see that it looks like for around 400 to 425, in Pennsylvania, all throughout the state, you can get anywhere from obviously about a two bedroom all the way up to a five bedroom as well. Most of these are single family homes, maybe some townhomes, some twins, but overall it looks like for about the 400 to 425 price point, you can get about the same size home and number of bedrooms, both in Pennsylvania and in New Jersey. Obviously the Pennsylvania average home sale price is significantly below the New Jersey home sale price. So we're gonna give that one to Pennsylvania. Keep in mind that obviously both Pennsylvania and New Jersey have a wide variety of homes and price points. And obviously it all depends on the specific area in each state that you're looking in. But just keep in mind that the numbers we just looked at was just the overall average sales price throughout the entire state. So next up, we're gonna compare the job markets in Pennsylvania versus New Jersey and maybe some of the largest companies that are in each state. So New Jersey is ranked as the 36th overall state for job growth. And some of the companies that made the Fortune 500 list that are stationed out of New Jersey are Johnson & Johnson, Prudential, Merck, Bed Bath & Beyond, Quest Diagnostics, Campbell Soup, Avis Budget Group, Selective Insurance, and some others as well. So compared to New Jersey as the 36th overall state for job growth, taking a look at Pennsylvania, which is ranked as the 23rd overall state for job growth. And some of the companies that made the Fortune 500 list in Pennsylvania are Comcast, Rite Aid, Aramark, Dick Sporting Goods, Erie Insurance, Hershey, PPNL, Toll Brothers, UGI, and a couple others as well. So although Pennsylvania has a higher job growth percentage, New Jersey actually has more Fortune 500 companies. So for that reason, we're gonna give New Jersey one point. So the next category that we're gonna look at is the taxes in each state. We're gonna break it down by the tax percentages and also just the overall different taxes in each state. So starting out with Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania is one of the few states that has a set income tax and that set percentage is 3.07%. There's some more info on inheritance and estate taxes. The realty transfer tax is 1%. It's actually a total of 2%. The seller of a property pays 1% and the buyer of a property pays 1%. Pennsylvania sales tax is 6% with an additional 1% in Allegheny County and an additional 2% in Philadelphia. PA has what they call a death tax, and that's $2.60 tax per pack of cigarettes and an 18% tax on liquor and just some additional taxes here below. All right, so now let's look at the different taxes and the tax percentages in New Jersey now that we just saw Pennsylvania's. For 2021, the New Jersey income and sales tax rates we can see here below. Unlike Pennsylvania, the New Jersey personal income tax, that depends on your actual income and that also depends on your if you're single or married. So just a couple examples for the personal income tax in New Jersey. For a single or married couple, it's a 1.4% income tax 
if they make 20,000 or less annually. If a married couple's annual combined salary income is between 70 to 80,000, their income tax is also 3.5%. If a single individual makes between 75,000 to half a million dollars a year, their income tax rate is just about double what it is in Pennsylvania for a total of 6.37%. So obviously we can see that the New Jersey income tax rates can definitely fluctuate compared to Pennsylvania that just has a set income tax rate. Taking a look down here at the New Jersey sales tax, it's a total of 6.625%. The average property tax rate in New Jersey is 2.42% compared to the national average of 1.07%. So based on the higher taxes in New Jersey, we're gonna give Pennsylvania a win for this one. So the next category we're gonna talk about is the crime stats. So just a reminder that this category is strictly off of the crime stats that I pulled from the internet. Anybody can pull these stats. I'll have a link down below if you wanna do more more in-depth research into the different areas in both New Jersey and in Pennsylvania. So diving into the crime rates for Pennsylvania, for a total population of 13,002,700 people, we can see here the breakdown between the different crime categories, between violent and property crimes, the number of crimes, the crime rates, along with the comparison to the entire US. So now looking at the New Jersey crime rates, for a total population of 9,288,900, 194 people broken down by violent and property crimes along with the comparison in New Jersey compared to the entire US. So after we briefly looked over that just keep in mind that obviously each state has both good and bad areas just like everywhere in the world and it's kind of hard to classify an entire state because just like for example, a real estate market is so hyper local and it so depends on the sp small specific area that you're looking in. That's kind of what the different crime rates in each area is like as well. So because it's so incredibly hyper local, we're not gonna have a winner and a loser on this category because it's completely up to your interpretation and your opinion, specifically where in those states that you're looking to move to. And honestly, if I picked a winner or a loser in this category, it is a little bit of a fuzzy gray area and I'm not willing to get into that. So the next category is arguably the most fun category and that is the things to do and the most popular attractions in both Pennsylvania and in New Jersey. Starting out in Pennsylvania, obviously we have the very famous Philadelphia Art Museum, which is a ginormous building full of so many amazing art pieces from artists all over the world, but arguably what makes it so very well known is the steps up to the museum that are well known as the Rocky Steps. Philadelphia actually has a Rocky statue right outside of the museum. So if you're visiting Philadelphia, make sure you run up and down the steps because there's probably never been a time that I passed those steps and not seen a whole bunch of people running up and down and doing the, the Rocky pose. Another great attraction in Pennsylvania is obviously the Liberty Bell. One of the most iconic symbols in American history is right there in Philadelphia and it's completely free to go and see. Another very popular attraction in Pennsylvania and probably one of my favorites is Hershey Park. Obviously, you can tell by the name Hershey, the Hershey Company, the Hershey Bar, was created and founded right in now what is called Hershey, Pennsylvania. So Hershey Park is so very well known and very popular because, well, what's better than chocolate? An amusement park that's based around chocolate. One half of it is a water park and the other half is just strictly an amusement park. And along with the typical amusement park rides, there's a chocolate factory that you can tour, you can make your own chocolate, you can buy fresh chocolate that was made right there in the factory. So if you're visiting Pennsylvania, I highly suggest to check out the Hershey Chocolate Factory at Hershey Park. So now heading over to New Jersey to take a look at some of Jersey's most popular attractions. So although New Jersey as a state is actually pretty small, don't let that fool you because there's a lot of different things to do in Jersey. Just a reminder, make sure you watch till the end of this video when I share one of the most important reasons why I see people choosing one of these states over the other. So the first very popular attraction in New Jersey is the Atlantic City Boardwalk. If you're not familiar with the East Coast and if you're not familiar with New Jersey, specifically, think of Atlantic City kind of like a smaller Las Vegas strip. It's lined with casinos, bars, restaurants, clubs, and unlike Las Vegas, you can walk out of a casino and see the ocean. The next great attraction in New Jersey, and then we'll mention two somewhat kind of well-known, maybe a little humorous attractions in Jersey. So the last major attraction is the Adventure Aquarium, which is right on the Delaware River 
in Camden, New Jersey. This massive two million gallon aquarium is right, right along the Delaware River and has more than 8,500 marine animals, multiple floors. This is probably one of the best aquariums in the whole US. So now over to the two smaller attractions in Jersey, one being the very famous Jersey Shore House in Seaside Heights, New Jersey. The other smaller attraction in New Jersey is actually the original Cake Boss Shop, which is from the show Cake Boss. And and that's right there in Hoboken, New Jersey. So comparing PA to New Jersey for the attractions, I'm gonna give New Jersey a point on that one because although Pennsylvania has a lot of historic and iconic sites, New Jersey has a great mix of different attractions and things to do for just about anyone and everyone. Everything from gambling to the beach and so much more. So since you stuck with me this far in the video, let's go over why I see more people moving to Pennsylvania over New Jersey when they have the choice. And that's because the exit tax in New Jersey. So what is the exit tax? So I'm not a CPA, so you'll have to check with a CPA or do some more in-depth research online. But from my understanding, the exit tax in New Jersey is an 8.97% tax on the net profit when you sell a home and relocate outside of New Jersey. So I don't live in New Jersey and I've never personally experienced this tax. So please make sure to do your own research if you're looking, if you're leaning towards New Jersey. I'm seeing a lot of people choose Pennsylvania just because if they buy a home in New Jersey and decide in a couple years that they wanna sell it, they don't wanna be taxed just because they're selling their home, made a profit, and are thinking about relocating outside of the state of New Jersey. So if you're thinking about moving to Pennsylvania, I would love to be a real estate resource of choice. If after this video you're leaning towards New Jersey, reach out to me as well and I can get you in touch with a highly preferred real estate agent in that area. And I will see you on one of these two videos next.